Here's a counterintuitive lesson for success. If you want to succeed, stop trying to win. The story starts with a man called Simon Ramo, who is an American engineer. He was a busy guy, developing and inventing things, starting Fortune 500 companies, and winning countless awards. He also wrote lots and lots and lots of books. I mean, there are dozens of books that look interesting, but the one I want to talk about is this. Yeah, a book about tennis. So Simon Rammel argued that there's two types of tennis. Pro tennis, and the tennis the best of us play. The rules, scoring, equipment in both games is completely the same, but there's a big difference in how points are won. Think about it, there's two different ways you can win points in tennis. You can either do something extraordinary your opponent can't respond to, well, the points can come because your opponent has screwed up. According to Ramo, in pro tennis, about 80% of the points are won, whereas in amateur tennis, about 80% of the points are lost. Based on this, Simon Ramo worked out an entire strategy for winning amateur tennis. As Charles D. Ellis, an investor who wrote about Simon Ramo's book, explains, the strategy for winning is to avoid mistakes. The way to avoid mistakes is to be conservative and keep the ball in play, letting the other fellow have plenty of room in which to blunder his way to defeat. I think this is a useful insight because there's many parts of our life where instead of straining to be smarter than the next person, we might be better off just avoiding being, well, stupid. Can you think of any practical applications of this counterintuitive lesson of success? I hear you ask. Well, yes. Take management. Airport bookshops are full of books explaining how to manage people. There's the Hershey Blanchard Situational Leadership Model, the Cage Distance Framework, Cotter's Eight Phases of Change, You Can Navigate Core Quadrants, Chart Vitality Curve, Rive a Behavioral Motivation Wheel, or Explore a Focus Energy Matrix. But if you look at surveys of what people most complain about when it comes to management, it's things like not getting recognition or your manager just not remembering your name. Most people would settle for some pretty basic stuff. So if you are a manager, maybe put the books to one side and just focus on not being a complete arsehole. Why, that's completely fascinating. Are there any other similarly amazing practical applications of this counterintuitive lesson of success? Well, yes. How about investing and making money? Every year, dozens of books are written on how to be rich. And in recent years, the news has been full of the obscure methods and weird schemes the rich use to reduce their taxes and increase their wealth. But actually, in terms of how much money you have, one of the most ruinous things you can do is actually just getting divorced. There's the money needed for the divorce itself and the doubling of housing costs and bills as you live two separate lives. And yet there are countless examples of business people who have spent their lifetime accumulating money only to see huge percentages of it disappear in divorce settlements. Now, I'm not trying to shame anyone who's got divorced. If your relationship's not right, of course you've got to do what you've got to do. But I can't help thinking with some of these people, if they'd spent a little bit of that money-making effort on their relationships with their partners, they might be in a better position. Okay, thanks for watching. Simon Ramo, Tennis, Management Books and Divorce. Uh, if you have a non-fiction book recommendation, put it below, because I love non-fiction books. And yeah, don't pay so much attention to the shiny clever things that you forget the basics. Yeah.